Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Grade 11 Functions class. This is 8.1 Simple Interest. So we're going to dive right in with an example. So the Canada Savings Bond, CSB was created in 1946. It's to help Canadians save money. Um, I'm sure you know lots about <coughs> bonds and things like that from history class. But uh, Alexandra buys a regular interest CSB for $1,000. It has a five-year term and it earns 6% interest annually. Meanwhile, yeah, she buys a really similar bond, uh, but has a compound interest. It's for the same amount of money, same term, and uh, the same amount of interest annually. Um, so the real difference is between the regular interest and the compound interest. So regular interest is actually the same thing as simple interest. Simple interest is earned or paid only on the original principal, so only on the thousand dollars. Principal is the amount that you borrow or invest. Compound interest is calculated every compounding period, so in this case every year um, we would calculate the interest. So we're going to do it and then maybe it'll be a little bit more clear. Um, so let's do Alexandra first. She's using simple interest. So Alexandra, we have you zero, one, two, three, four, uh, five. For some reason, Smartboard decided to delete it. So five. Okay. So at the end of the year zero, she puts in a thousand dollars, which we're going to forward to the principal for the year. And actually, because it's simple interest, we're going to have this pr same principal every year. So it's going to be a thousand dollars every single time, like this. And so the interest that is earned is going to be the principal times the amount of interest, so 0 0.06 in this case. Um, and this is called, this is what we call, call R, so we'll call this PR, like this, and so <coughs> with P being principal. And so in year one, she's going to earn $60 of interest, and every year she's going to earn the same amount because um, she's only earning interest on the original principal. Um, and so this is going to add up. So in the first year, she gets $60, and at the end of the year, she's going to have $10.60. Um, year two, she's got 60 plus 60, 120 uh, in interest, so that adds up to 1120 in her account, and so forth. So you can see that it is linear, um, and it just, and you just add the same amount every time to her bank account, and we get, we get the amount like this. So one three zero zero. So this is what's in left in her account uh, after the end of the term. Actually, this is what her bond matures to. Is how would you say it? So she has a thirteen hundred dollars back um, when she when she gets her bond back. So if we're doing yeah she she has a little bit more of a complicated um, formula because it's compounding, which means that um, the principal is going to be changing every year. So in year zero, she has $1,000, so we're going to forward that over to the principal for year one. And she's going to earn $60 of interest, because again, we're multiplying the principal times 0 0.06 um, to get 60. So we add, uh, so that's $60, and um, we add the principal and the interest earned to get the amount at the end of the year, which is 1060. Okay? Then we take this number and we're going to put it in the principal for the year. So now we're multiplying by 1060, 1060 times 0 0.06, which gives us 6360. You just do it in your calculator. And um, so the accumulated interest is 60 plus 6360, so $123.60. Um, and the total amount she's earned is this number plus this number, so 1060 plus 6360, which is 1236. Sorry, one, one, two, three, six, uh, and sixty cents. Okay. Now we take that number, and again, we're going to just move that to the front, right here. We multiply this by 0 0.06. This is our new principal, and we get uh, 67.42 as the interest earned that year. Um, if we add all the interest earned together for the accumulated interest, it ends up being 191.02, and the total amount at the end of the year is 1191.02. Um, before that, again, we're using the amount at the end of the year to be our principal for the next year. Multiply it by 0 0.06, we're going to get um, 260, oh, sorry, 71.46. I did this in advance, so I'm just copying my chart. We um, add all of these four together to get the accumulated interest. It's 262.48, and you do 1191.02 plus 71.46. It ends up being one thousand two hundred sixty two and forty eight cents.
And then again, the last one, we're forwarding that amount, that balance, to the principal, multiplying it by 0 0.06 to get 75.75, adding all five of these together now to get, um, sorry, I made a little boo boo there, okay, to get uh, 338.23, and so in the end she gets 1338.23 um, out of her mature bond. So that's the amount she ends up with. So we're going to graph the amount at the end of the year versus the time for both the graphs. I already um, filled in the chart here. This is Alexandra, and this was Yashi. And I have a graph here as well, so we're just going to graph the points. So one, 0, 1,000. Let's start with Alexandra. So she's here. Um, and these go up by increments of 20. So in the first year, she gets uh, she has 1060 at the end of the year. After the second year, she has 10, uh, 1120, so that's right there. After the third year, she has 1180, that's right there. Um, did I do that wrong? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1120, oh, sorry. Just going to move that up one. Just be careful when you're graphing. Um, I know I want a straight line. Um, you could probably tell that it was a linear equation, so... Um, ends up being linear, so that's how I kind of can tell if I make a mistake. So 1240 and 1300, right there. Okay, so that's the graph of Yashi's, um, Yashi's uh, money over time, or the worth of her bond over time. And if we draw it, if we drew it properly, then we should get a straight line all the way through, and let's label that Yashi. Okay, and now we can do Oh, sorry, that was Alexandra's. I keep saying Yashi, but it was Alexandra. Let me correct myself. My bad. So Yashi has a really similar looking graph, except hers is growing a little bit faster. So she starts with $1,000 and has um, 1060 after the first year, but after that it sort of blows up. She gets um, 112360, so it's going to be slightly above the other one. Um, after year two, year three is 1191, um, so it's really close to the 1200. And after the next year, 1262, so again, getting a little bit higher here, 1262. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> having difficulty, difficulty graphing. 1262, so this is 12, 20, 40, 62, like that. Um, and after the fifth year, she's got 1338, so 13 and almost to the 40, like that. Okay, so you can see that actually hers is growing a little bit more quickly. This is actually an exponential growth over time. Um, so that's, yeah, she's, you try, try to get through there, but <laughs> I'm just having difficulty with my tablet right now. So you can see that um, one is growing more quickly than the other. So which type earns more interest by the end of the year? We know it's compounding. After the first year, it doesn't make a difference, but after that, it, it, does, um, it does make a big difference, the compounding. Which type of CSB will double more quickly? It will be the compounding, because we actually have exponential growth, and so we can say that um, the simple interest is linear, and the compounding, compound interest, is exponential because we're multiplying every single time. Predict the amount of money that Alexandra will have in 20 years. So we want to create a formula for that. Um, the amount is going to be the principal plus the amount of interest, okay? Interest is going to be the number of years times the rate, right? Because it's linear. So we would just multiply the rate times the, times the time times the principal. Okay, so that is the amount of interest that we earn. So if we plug that in, we get A equals P plus PRT, where R is the rate and T is the time. And uh, if we simplify that, P times 1 plus RT, I'm just common factoring. And so these two are actually the formulas that we would use to find simple interest. 
Um, so I can plug that in. I get A equals, I know my principal was 1,000. My rate was 0 0.06, 6%. And after 20 years is what we are looking for. So just type that into your calculator. Um, 0 0.06 times 20 plus 1 times 1,000 using your bed mass properly, and it will be 2,200. Okay, so predict the amount she will have in 20 years. Alexandra will have $2,200 in 20 years. Not a terrific investment, but at least she gets something. It's more than, more than double. Good for her. So let's do some examples using those formulas. Avi invests 48.50 at 7.6% per annum. This means per annum, so it's per year. Per annum, per year. Okay, simple interest. If he wants the money to increase to 8,000, how long will he need to invest his money? So we know that P is going to be 48.50. R is going to be 0 0.076, so convert to the decimal. And A is going to be 8,000. That's how much he wants to end up with. So we're going to use the formula um, A equals P times 1 plus RT. And just plug the numbers in. 8,000 equals 4850 times 1 plus 0 0.076T. And then we'll solve it. So 8,000 divided by 4850 is approximately 0 0.6, sorry, 1.65-ish. Um, you can just leave it in your calculator if you want to get the exact value. Um, we're just going to be rounding anyways, but you can try to get as close as you can. So we subtract off that 1, so we'll get 0 0.076t, and then we divide by 0 0.076t. We'll get t is approximately 21.70 years. And if we want to be a little bit more precise, we can do 0 0.70 times 365. So it'll be 21 years and 256 point something days, so we'll round it to 257 days because it's not going to happen before that uh, 57th day ends. So we should always round up at the end of that. So Avi needs to wait to invest for 21 years and 257 days. Good luck with that. Okay. So this is my last example. Lior borrows $540 for 85 days by taking a cash advance on her credit card. Because it's a credit card, the interest rate is 26% per annum, simple interest. It's a very high rate. How much will she need to pay back at the end of the loan period, and how much interest will she have paid? So obviously, you don't want to borrow from your credit card. Um, <coughs> But here we have the principal is 540, and we have the rate is 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.26. You wish it was 0 0.026, 0 0.26. Um, now, the T is not 85. It's actually going to be 85 over 365. Why? Because this is in days, and the interest is in years, so we have to be in the same units, OK? So again, we'll use the same formula. A equals P times 1 plus I, oh, sorry, 1 <laughs> plus RT. Um, and so A is uh, equal to 540 times 1 plus 0 0.26 times 85 over 365. And uh, for our purposes for investment and etc., we're going to use 365 as the number of days in the year. So you don't have to worry about leap years at all. We're assuming it's not a leap year. Um, type that into your calculator. You'll get A is equal to $572.70. And so the interest, we know that A is equal to P plus I. That's interest is earned. Um, so 572.70 equals 540 minus, plus I, so I is equal to $32.70. That's a big price to pay for 85, do for 85 days. So Lior owes $572.70 and pays $32.70. And 70 cents in interest. Okay, make sure you read the question so that you know that you are actually answering it. It's one of the main problems, silly reasons to lose interest, or sorry, to lose marks. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, 
I hope you enjoyed it. Basically, we just learned about simple interest and compound interest. We're going to talk about compound interest a little bit more when we get to 8.2. Um, and we have two formulas for us to memorize, A equals P plus I and A equals P times 1 plus RT. Of course, this is the really important one right here, and this one is sort of incidental. You could probably just figure it out on your own. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.